In the 100 plus year history of the Indianapolis 500, approximately 763 drivers have raced in the event, over 219 have led a lap, and just 70 drivers have won the race. But everyone involved has a similar feeling about the greatest spectacle in racing. It's been around for 100 plus years. We have fast cars, the technology, the safety. We have great, great drivers. I mean, the best drivers in the world have driven here. For me, it's, it's, it's tradition, it's patriotism, it's innovation. It's the pinnacle of our sport. It's the biggest race in the world. I've been very lucky to go to you know, Super Bowls, World Cups, Olympic Games. The atmosphere at the Indianapolis 500 on race day is like nothing else. 250,000 people here in one day, in one single day. So it's so many people. It's, um, I, I feel like it's just a show to about star. And the best part of you part of the show, the love for this place, the passion that I have for this place, it's indescribable. For me, this place is magical. Ray Haroon won the first Indianapolis 500 back in 1911. It's believed he used the first ever rear view mirror on his car instead of using a riding mechanic, which was customary in those days. During the 1930 race, Billy Arnold took the lead on lap three and never looked back. He won the race leading 198 laps, a record that still stands today. Louis Meyer became the first three-time winner of the Indianapolis 500 in 1936. It was the first year that the Borg Warner Trophy was awarded to the winner, and Meyer was also the first driver to celebrate his win drinking milk in Victory Lane, a tradition that continues to this day. And now the traditional swig of milk. How sweet it is. Wilbur Shaw won the 500 three times in a four-year span, winning in 1937, 39, and 40. He later became the president of the Speedway and remains the last Indiana-born driver to win the Indy 500. Troy Rutman was the youngest winner of the Indianapolis 500, driving to Victory Lane in 1952 at just 22 years old. In 1962, Parnelli Jones became the first driver to qualify at over 150 miles an hour. His fantastic run showed all four laps in the 150 mile an hour bracket. Despite running 29 races, winning three poles, and leading the third most laps in history, Mario Andretti won his only Indy 500 in 1969. Rain stopped the 1976 race after just 102 laps, making it the shortest 500 in history. Johnny Rutherford became the only driver to walk to Victory Lane at the Speedway. In 1977, Tom Sneva became the first driver to qualify at over 200 miles per hour, and Janet Guthrie became the first female driver to qualify at Indy. A.J. Foyt went on to win the race, becoming the Speedway's first four-time winner. He finished his career with a record 35 starts, four poles, four wins, and 555 laps led, fourth most in history. The closing laps of the 1982 race are some of the most exciting racing in history. Gordon Johncock and Rick Mears battle to the checkered flag. Gordon Johncock off the fourth turn. Mears is right behind him. Johncock, Mears makes a try. Johncock wins it. I lost the one-tenth of a second. Danny Sullivan and Mario Andretti were battling for the lead in 1985 when Sullivan lost control of his car and narrowly missed Mario. Sullivan went on to victory, making his spin and win one of the most famous moves in racing history. In 1987, Alan Sr. became the second four-time winner at the Speedway. Filling in for Danny and Gaius, who crashed in practice, Unser qualified and raced in a year-old car that was on display in a hotel lobby just a few weeks before he drove it to victory at Indy. 1991 marked the 75th anniversary for the Indianapolis 500. Willie T. Ribs became the first African-American driver, and Hiro Machusta became the first Japanese driver to qualify at Indy. Four different members of the Andretti family competed in the race. Mario, his sons Michael and Jeff, and their cousin John all started the race. Rick Mears started on pole and won the race going away, becoming Indy's third four-time winner. In 1992, Lynn St. James became the second woman to qualify at Indy and the first to be named Rookie of the Year. 
Allen Sir Jr. and Scott Goodyear battled in the closest finish in Indy history. The checkered flag is out. Goodyear makes a move. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. You just don't know what Indy means. <laughs> Ari Leyendyke set a new speed record at Indianapolis in 1996. It's a new track record. His new four lap qualifying record of 235.986 miles an hour still stands today. In 2000 at just 19 years old, Sarah Fisher became the third woman to qualify at Indy. Elio Castroneves captured the first of his three Indy 500 victories back in 2001. With the win, the Speedway rookie brought his trademark of climbing the fence to Indy. In 2005, Danica Patrick qualified fourth and finished fourth in her first Indy 500. She became the first woman in history to lead the race. 190 of 200 laps will be complete this time by Danica Patrick going side by side with Weldon. She'll be the leader in turn one. The next year in 2006, Sam Hornish Jr. battled Mario Andretti's grandson, Marco, to the finish line in one of the closest finishes in Indy 500 history. Can a teenager win in Indianapolis? Sam Hornish Jr. ain't the best, he'll win it! Sam Hornish Jr. goes to the inside of the Marco Andretti and wins it in the final 100 yards! In 2008, Graham Rahal, son of the 1986 winner Bobby Rahal, qualified for his first Indy 500. The Ray Halls became the 22nd father and son to race at Indy. And in 2012, Dario Franchitti won for the third time at Indy, making him just the ninth driver to win the Indy 500 three or more times. The next year, 2013, Tony Kanaan won. And in 2014, it was Ryan Hunter Ray in victory lane. Checker flag is in the air. Ryan Hunter Ray wins the Indianapolis 500. The 2015 race had fans on the edge of their seats as Penske Racing teammates Juan Pablo Montoya and Will Power swapped the lead repeatedly in the closing laps. But at the end, it was Montoya who crossed the finish line for his second Indy 500 win setting the record for the longest span between successive 500 victories at 16 years. 2016 was a year of celebration at the Speedway, and it marked the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Months worth of preparation, festivities, and buildup to this monumental day culminated in an epic race as IndyCar rookie Alexander Rossi pulled out an astounding win by saving as much fuel as possible and taking the lead while others had to pit in the closing laps. Alexander Rossi in the turn number four on Q. Twin checkers are out and the rookie will win the 100th Indianapolis 500 mile race. You just won the Indy 500 for me. Oh my God. Alex, you are the champ. The stunned look on Rossi's face in victory lane told the story. I, I have no idea how we, how we pulled that off. We did it. <laughs> we did it.